everyone. Happy Tuesday. I hope you're having a great start to your week so far. Today we're going to be talking about the Sulky Stabilizer Selection Tool. This is a really cool resource at sulky.com that helps you decipher what stabilizer you should be using for your particular project. And as we know, stabilizer isn't just for machine embroidery. So if you are working with a tricky fabric or doing a technique that you aren't used to or haven't done before, this reference tool is a really, really great way to um, kind of start, a great starting place. Um, sometimes, um, as you know, if you are into machine embroidery or you do a lot of quilting or applique or lace work, then you probably already know that multiple stabilizers um, sometimes can work for any particular thread, needle, and fabric combination. Um, but, you know, sometimes some work better than others, and there are always exceptions to the rule. So sometimes when we're using that stabilizer selector tool, a couple of different recommendations will come on the screen, and then we can read through those and make an educated guess, really, for what stabilizer is going to work for us. So I'm gonna show you what that selection tool looks like. So hopefully, if you haven't used it before, um, or if you've only used it here and there, you'll become more familiar with it and want to use it more and more because I even use it sometimes. And, you know, I work exclusively with Sulky stabilizers. And still there are some times where I'm thinking, I'm just going to double check that I have chosen the correct stabilizer for this particular fabric, and I will often go to that resource and see what stabilizer it recommends for me. Um, so, you know, I think it's a really cool thing that you all will enjoy using. But before we get started with that, I want to remind everyone that in a couple short weeks, we will be doing our Casey Duffel video cast in partnership with the American Sewing uh, Guild. <laughs> and I'm tripping over my words today. I haven't had enough coffee, apparently, with the American Sewing Guild. And, uh, you know, they will be bringing some people to the party. We are bringing some people to the party, and I hope that you will enjoy the party. This is a 90-minute video cast at sewingonline.sulky.com. We will be going live on February 8th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. It is $5.99 to register for the video cast. And with that $5.99, you will get all access to the video cast materials, meaning if you can't join us live, you can watch that video at any time. You just go to your library at sewingonline.sulky.com, access that event, and you can watch it at any time. Rewind, pause, fast forward, all of those good things. Also, you will get our Floral Foraging Machine Embroidery Collection completely free with purchase of the event. And that's about like a $25 value um, or thereabouts. <laughs> so you're getting really great machine embroidery designs to embellish your KC duffel. This burgundy version, we have two kits available. We have this burgundy version, and we also have this beautiful gray version. It's the same rifle paper canvas print from Cotton and Steel in two different colorways. So the burgundy comes with burgundy faux leather and antique hardware, and the gray comes with black faux leather and nickel hardware. You could see my finished bags are hanging up behind me. I absolutely love them. It's a really roomy duffel style bag um, and the sides clip open to give you even more room if you really need to stuff your bag for a weekend getaway or something like that. But it holds a lot of great stuff. It has great structure to it. It stands up on its own. It has two different uh, strap options. You have a longer adjustable strap as well as two handles so you can carry it in a couple of different ways. But that front pocket, there are two outer pockets, one on each side, and two interior pockets as well. So 
you know, you can hold lots of stuff. But those two outer pockets are just the perfect place for machine embroidery. Now, if machine embroidery is not your thing, you can do decorative stitches, you can do handwork, you can do quilting along that pocket. So there are a lot of different embellishment options. We will be focusing on machine embroidery on that pocket. And that design that you see right there is one of the floral foraging designs. So it really complements that floral fabric. And I think you will all really enjoy, you know, putting those designs on so many different things, garments, home deck, and bags and tote projects. So be sure that you have registered for the Casey Duffel and grab up your kit in the colorway of your choice uh, so that we can all be ready on February 8th together. All right, so stabilizer selector tool. The project that uh, I am going to be showing you today is actually embroidering on a sweatshirt. And I kind of gave you a sneak peek of this sweatshirt project when we unveiled our brand new Feeling Lucky machine embroidery palette. This palette comes with these really cute St. Patrick's Day themed designs. All six designs come in three sizes and you get 10 spools of sulky rayon thread included when you purchase the palette. You can also, of course, just purchase the machine embroidery collection or you can purchase these designs individually. So on our sweatshirt, the reason that it's called the Lucky Sweatshirt is because I chose this Lucky design and I am going to be using the five by seven design, which is the medium size design. It's sized for the hoop parameters, so it works with a five by seven hoop. Now I used a 260 by 200 and I actually enlarged my five by seven design 20% using my machine screen. And I just felt like that fit the back of my sweatshirt the best. And I'm gonna be doing the big reveal of the design with you. Um, I haven't even taken it off of the machine, so I will be showing that to you momentarily. But here are the beautiful threads that come with that machine embroidery palette. And one lucky viewer who is watching today, liking, sharing, commenting, asking questions, engaging with the post, that's all you have to do to be eligible to win the uh, gift for today's So What? One lucky viewer who is doing all of those things is going to win the machine embroidery design collection valued at $34.99. Now, if you want to purchase the palette, it's $49.99 and you get all 10 thread spools plus all of those great designs. So a really great value when you bundle those all together. Now, this design it's $6.99, but like I said, it comes in three sizes. So you're getting the size for a 4x4 four four hoop, the size for a 5x7 hoop, and then a size for a 9x10 or above hoop as well. So all three design or all three sizes uh, with one download. You don't have to um, go and purchase, you know, three different sizes. So that's kind of nice. All right, so I started with the design. I found the perfect sweatshirt. Now, what kind of stabilizer should I be using for my sweatshirt? Does anyone have any ideas out there? For those of you who have embroidered on sweatshirt knit before, ooh, this is another good thing to note. There are so many different types of sweatshirts, right? It could be backed with fleece. The whole sweatshirt could be made out of fleece. It could be a sweatshirt uh, knit. Um, it could have no fleece or fuzziness inside at all and be more of a um, sort of interlock knit uh, type of sweatshirt or hoodie. So you really need to look at the fabric composition um, or of the composition of your fabric of your sweatshirt to know what kind of stabilizer to use as well. So I'm gonna go here to the Sulky website. Let me just show you that. So here we are on the Sulky homepage. This is what it looks like when you are at sulky.com. And let me move some things around here so I can have a better vantage point. So up at the top, you will see the navigation bar where it says thread, 
stabilizer, tools and supplies, uh, specialty shop, education, and resources and inspiration is where we want to go for that stabilizer selector tool. So we are under resources and inspiration, and we're going to go down to reference tools. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And here are a bunch of sulky reference tools just for you. If you scroll down, the stabilizer selection tool is the very first thing that comes up here. So some of our other reference tools, color conversion tools, those are super handy, especially if you're doing handwork with sulky cotton petites, you can get a color conversion tool uh, for floss and things like that. So you can easily use the right sulky thread a lot of the times machine embroidery designs are designed for a specific thread brand. And if that's not sulky and all you have is sulky thread, of course, you will need to go to that color conversion tool down here and you can convert those other thread manufacturers colors to sulky thread colors so that you get the right look that you want for your design. So let's focus here on the stabilizer selection tool. So find your correct combination. The first thing we're going to do is select a technique. And like I said, stabilizer isn't just for machine embroidery. Look at all these techniques. Applique, Battenberg lace buttonholes. If you've never used stabilizer when creating a buttonhole, you should really try it because your life will be forever changed. You will have the most professional looking buttonholes. It's fantastic. Cut work, crochet edging, crazy patchwork, puffy foam, all kinds of different techniques to choose from. So computerized embroidery is what we are looking at. And our options are applique, heavy density, light density, medium density, quilting, and red work. So the lucky design that I have chosen has pretty dense, heavy thread work, heavy stitch fills in the design. So I'm going to go with heavy density and I will click on that. Now it's telling me to select a fabric. So look at all these fabrics we have to choose from. So, so many. And you can see all the way down here, I have sweatshirt fleece. So that's the one I'm going to choose for my chosen sweatshirt. But you may also find it helpful to go with knit. Let's see, where is that? Or it might say something, there we go, sweater knit, terry cloth towels, um, let's see, a double knit, wool jersey, so many different choices. Heavyweight knit, interlock knit, lightweight knit. So just take a look and, you know, really find, then we have cotton knit, uh, heavy, light, and medium. So I'm going to go with sweat, sweatshirt fleece because my particular sweatshirt, while it is a knit on the right side, the wrong side has a little bit of fleecy texture to it. So now here comes our suggested stabilizer. So like I mentioned, a lot of the times there are two or maybe even three stabilizers that might work for our chosen fabric. This one is telling me that there are two suggested backings. One of them is sticky plus and one of them is stiffy. Now, since the back of my sweatshirt has this fleecy texture to it, I don't really want to use sticky plus because sometimes when you are peeling away the sticky plus, those that fleecy texture can kind of stick to the sticky back tear away stabilizer, making it a little bit more difficult to remove. So instead, I am going to go with the Stiffy stabilizer. The Stiffy is a tear away stabilizer, but it is heavier weight than Sulky Tear Easy. 
if all I had on hand was tear easy and I really wanted to do this sweatshirt today instead of wait for some stiffy to come in the mail, I would use two, maybe even three layers of the tear easy. And when I removed that stabilizer by gently tearing it away, I would make sure to remove each layer independently. When you go to remove multiple layers and try to tear it away, sometimes you can pull some of the thread from the right side of your project toward the wrong side of your project, and that can create puckers and just make for an unbalanced stitch out. So I'm gonna go with Stiffy on the back, and then it's also suggesting a topper, Sulky Salvi. Now, sometimes with sweatshirts, a topper isn't needed. This is really assuming that my sweatshirt fleece is fleecy on the right side as well. So I may or may not need that topper, but I'm gonna use one because my sweatshirt is a little bit heavier weight um, sometimes with a lighter weight sweatshirt, you don't necessarily need a topper because your stitches are going to sit nice and proud on that fabric surface. Um, but if it's a really loopy sweatshirt or has that texture to it, a topper is absolutely necessary. So that is the stabilizer selector tool in action. And I'm just going to show you what happens when I choose a couple of different fabrics here. So uh, let's go with computerized embroidery and we'll go with a light density. Let's say not a lot of fill stitches or um, an outline only design. And for my fabric, I'm gonna just go ahead and say, uh, let's see. Let's say I'm going with a quilted fabric. So this is telling me to use Tear Easy and that Solvi topper as well. Now, of course, that really depends on what kind of quilted fabric you're using. So a little bit, you know, of your intuition and your experience in embroidering other things will come into play here as well. Let's say I'm going with linen. Does anything change? It's telling me sticky plus. That's a big clue that I probably also shouldn't hoop the fabric. Hooping is probably going to cause those linen fibers to separate ever so slightly along that inner hoop ring when I hoop the fabric. And then when I go to unhoop everything, those linen fibers, fibers are going to want to spring back where they once were. And again, we've got puckering problems and we might even have hoop burn, which means where those fibers have separated along that inner hoop ring, there's no way of getting them back together. So we've essentially burned that hoop ring into those fabric fibers. And there's really, it's very, very hard to recover from that. So whenever the stabilizer selector tool is telling you to use Sticky Plus, that's a really good indication that maybe you shouldn't be hooping the fabric because Sticky Plus is a sticky back, uh, paper backed tear away stabilizer. And what we would do is hoopless embroidery, what I call hoopless embroidery, which is when we hoop only the stabilizer and then you score the paper backing inside of the stabilizer or inside of the hoop once the stabilizer has been hooped, tear it away to reveal that sticky surface and then we stick the fabric right to it. So that is a little bit of the stabilizer selector tool in action. I hope you all will give it a try. So go to sulky.com navigate to the resources and inspiration, then navigate to the reference tools and you will find that stabilizer selection tool. It's just really a lifesaver sometimes when you're just not sure where to start or not sure if you need a topper or not, those kinds of questions can be at, or can be answered by that stabilizer selection tool. All right, so 
back to our sweatshirt project. So here's just a screenshot of that stabilizer selector tool and the stabilizers that it recommended for my particular sweatshirt. All right, so again, I went with the Sulky Stiffy Stabilizer. Just one layer of that stabilizer is all I needed. I also, since it recommended the Sticky Plus, I thought, hmm, probably shouldn't hoop this thing. Also, and I'll show you this when I do the big reveal, there are some seams down the back of my sweatshirt, which I actually really liked and was one of the reasons why I chose this sweatshirt because those seams kind of frame out my embroidery design. It was a happy accident. And when I found that sweatshirt, I was like, this needs machine embroidery. So I didn't want to hoop the sweatshirt because those seams would interfere with a nice um, solid, you know, hold from the hoop. Um, if there's any kind of plush fabric as well, like if there were fleece on the top, I wouldn't want to hoop it either for fear of that hoop burn. So I did hoopless embroidery, but instead of a sticky back stabilizer, I'm using the sulky stiffy. So how do I make it sticky to... Uh, adhere my sweatshirt to it. Well, my trusty KK2000. All right, so first we've got our piece of stabilizer, the large hoop that I'm using for that five by seven design, which again, I enlarged even further. And then I've got my KK2000. So I hoop only that stabilizer and then I spray the stabilizer with the KK2000, which is our temporary spray adhesive. Now for this, I also sprayed the back of my sweatshirt so that I had an even stronger hold um, for those two materials to stick together and make sure that my sweatshirt wasn't going to go anywhere once I had it in the hoop, or over the hoop, rather. So once I've prepared the stabilizer, I need to also prepare my sweatshirt and make sure that I get it in the right place on that sticky stabilizer. So what I have done here, it's kind of on its side. So, you know, tilt your head a little bit with me. And I actually pin marked it um, to denote where I want the top of the embroidery to go, where I want the bottom of the embroidery to go, which is the end of my pin point on the bottom there, and then my two side edges. So this is how I chose to mark my design. You could certainly use a chalk marker or a removable marking pen. A friction highlighter would be great. Um, something like that. If you have a placement tool that you love to use and that is foolproof for you or specific to your machine brand, by all means, do that placement method. So here I have pin marked where my design is going to go on the sweatshirt. And then I place my sweatshirt on that sticky stabilizer, making sure that my pin marks are aligned with the markings on my hoop. You could also print out a template of your design to make sure that it's going to be in the right place on your sweatshirt. And then once I had that in place, I just removed those pins and used my hand to make sure everything was nice and flat and everything was sticking um, over that sticky stabilizer in the hoop and double and triple checked my embroidery placement before I began the stitch out. All right, so once I had my sweatshirt all nice and stuck, I put the hoop on the machine and then I used even more of the KK2000 to put my topper in place. So this is just the Sulky Salvi original. You will find Sulky Salvi as well as Super Salvi and Ultra Salvi. For toppers, I always use the regular original Sulky Salvi. Ultra Salvi and Super Salvi, um, those are really more are more for uh, like th things like freestanding lace when you are stitching only on the stabilizer or even some in the hoop projects I have seen done with that Ultra Solvi. 
um, which is just a really thicker version of the Solvi. So when you are purchasing a topper, um, go for the Sulky Solvi or the Heat Away Clear Film. So if you like using the Heat Away and your garment can withstand the heat of an iron, um, that's a really cool removal method because you can hover a hot iron over the top or the edges of your stitches and the stabilizer will just like lift clean away. And any stabilizer that kind of wants to remain along the edges of your thread kind of gets sucked in to those stitches um, and just dissolves with the heat of that iron. So that's a really cool topper um, alternative to Solvi. If you're working with a fabric that cannot um, be washed, so the wash away Solvi topper obviously wouldn't work in that instance. Um, or I'll, conversely, if you're working with a garment that cannot withstand the heat from an iron and you want to go with the sol Solvi. So again, using your educated um, uh, guess really, or your experience to kind of gauge those things as well. So then we've got our topper in place over the top of the sweatshirt or the sweatshirt right side. And then I actually did a, a perimeter based, a design perimeter based. Um, a lot of machines have the option to do either a hoop perimeter based or a design perimeter based. And I chose the design perimeter based because the Solvi that I had, the width that I had, was just big enough for my design. You can see that lower edge um, was just big enough there. If I had had a larger piece of Solvi, I could do a hoop perimeter based, and that would really secure the rest of my sweatshirt um, in the hoop there. But honestly, I really did this for two reasons, because let's face it, the KK2000 is enough. I really didn't need more basting to make sure that my sweatshirt didn't move during the stitch out, but I really wanted to double check my embroidery placement as well. So that's another reason for doing that design perimeter based rather than the hoop perimeter based. Um, you could just double check and make sure you have an equal um, amount of fabric you know, bordering your design and that it looks symmetrical from top to bottom or however, wherever you want to place it. It's just another tool to kind of ensure that proper placement. You know, they always say measure twice, cut once. And with embroidery placement, I triple, quadruple, you know, I check it so many different ways, especially on a garment, um, a, a pre-made garment where, you know, your embroidery is going to be where it's going to be after it starts, especially a design with a lot of heavy stitch fill. So you really, really want to make sure that you have that design placed properly, you know, where you want it to go. So perimeter based, and then I started the stitch out and actually just took a little video of the stitch out starting so that you could see all of my combination of materials working together. That stiffy, the sweatshirt, the Solvi, and then the rayon thread. And I used a 9014 embroidery needle. And here we go to the video. It's just a couple minutes long so that you can see the beginning of the stitch out.
All right, so that was just the beginning. And this design in, in the size that I am stitching it out has almost 28,000 stitches to it. So that was just a small taste of uh, it getting going. But I am going to now, you know, fast forward in your mind and I'm going to remove my sweatshirt from the hoop and we can complete the project together. So Okay, so here I have my finished stitch out, and this is kind of like a cropped sweatshirt a little bit. So you can see this is the seaming I was talking about. It's got these seams across here, and wasn't that the perfect frame for a machine embroidery design? I just thought that was so perfect along the back. Now, I have really long hair. Most of the time I wear it up anyways, but I did position the design down just a little bit because you have to take into account the um, shoulder seam and where that hits. You know, your sweatshirt, when you have it flat, um, you always uh, need to take that little curve of your shoulders into account. So um, it might not look symmetrical um, up and down or, you know, centered, I should say. But I took into account about an inch for that curvature that's going to go up to that shoulder seam when I was trying to place this in the center of the back of the sweatshirt. So now I've got my completed design and I did want to show you that I substituted Sulky Poly Sparkle for the little gold coins. Um, you're supposed to use the same yellow that is in the rainbow for those gold coins. But I thought, I want a little metallic glitz for the gold coins. So I subbed out the 38 Poly Sparkle just for those little coins. And I didn't have to do any adjustments to my machine or needle because I was already using a 9014 embroidery needle. So it's really hard to see that sparkle but it turned out so great. You can really see, you know, poly sparkle is a polyester thread with just flecks of metallic running through it. So it's not, um, you know, super crazy bulletproof metallic, right? It's just a little hint of glitz for those gold coins. So I absolutely love that. So I've got a little bit of jump threads to clip, and I like using my little squeezers. We have these at sulky.com. They're called curved tipped squeezers, and you can see the end there curves upward so that when you go to clip your jump threads, you can get the tip of the squeezers in between the thread and the garment and quickly just snip those jump threads off without harming anything underneath. So that's what I use to trim all my jump threads. I think those two were the last that I had. Now I need to get rid of my basting stitches. And there's always an area, it's usually the upper right corner, where um, it kind of back stitches over itself before it does the perimeter based function. So I snip along those threads I know it's hard to see because I'm not uh, filming with multiple cameras today. So I will try to make it easy for you to see, but I'm just snipping off those threads to start getting rid of those basting stitches. And again, these curved scissors are so great for that. And then you can just kind of snip just as you were removing any stitches and quickly and easily uh, take care of those. Now, I don't do um, perimeter basting. I'm just gonna clip from the wrong side and get my bobbin thread. Oh, good question, actually. Um, thank you for asking it. I did just use sulky 60 weight bobbin thread for the bobbin and it worked perfectly. 
Uh, for something like this, for like a knit or sweatshirt or stretchy garment, um, I don't recommend using the rayon thread that you would use for the outer part of the garment um, on the inside or wrong side of the garment. Sometimes um, it can make it a little bit too heavy weight, I guess. Um, especially when you still want the rest of your garment to kind of stretch, um, and you know, go with the flow and fit over your body and drape nicely. So I go with a lighter weight thread in the bobbin. If you want your bobbin thread to match your top thread, instead of using a neutral sulky bobbin thread, which sulky bobbin thread comes in white and it also comes in black. And then if you're using pre-wounds, you can also get it in a tan color. And I believe there's a gray as well. But um, if you're getting spools of bobbin thread, you have white and black to choose from. So if you want your bobbin thread to match your top thread, you can use Sulky Poly Light for your bobbin thread. And that is a 60 weight thread. It's really great for piecing projects as well. Um, but at any rate, you can find poly light in a bunch of colors. Um, and if you like to use polyester thread for your embroidery, especially on garments, instead of using rayon, the uh, Sulky Poly Deco is also a 40 weight thread. And you can find the poly light in the same colors as the poly deco. So that's just another option. And I'm just clipping some more jump threads along the back of my design now that I've gotten um, my basting uh, stitches all trimmed up and ready to remove. I'm just kind of cleaning up the wrong side of the design so I don't have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of jump, messy jump threads, you know, showing. I know it's the inside of a garment, but it's still going to go against your skin. You're still going to see it every time you put the garment on, especially something that is a zip up sweatshirt like this one, you know, um, you might catch glimpses of the back of it. Certainly not when you're wearing it, but when you remove it, if you're layering up like we have to do here in uh, Colorado for most seasons, because you just never know what the weather is going to do. All right, I just have a couple more threads to go. So I was saying, you know, a lot of the times I don't do the perimeter uh, basting step because I'm rather impatient <laughs> and when my design is complete, I don't want to have to do this step, which seems to take forever, even though it really doesn't, you know, and honestly, if it's going to help us achieve perfect placement of our design and it's just another tool we can use to make sure that, you know, our design is where we want it, then I mean, how much time does it really actually take? You all can probably tell me because you just watched me do it. But all right, a couple more stray threads just to clean things up. Okay, so now I have gotten rid of all the bobbin threads. I can just pull that top basting thread off. And then I'm going to remove my topper while I still have this on the hoop because it just gives me a nice stable surface. And I'm simply going to tear it away. Now, even though this is a water soluble stabilizer, I'm not gifting this to anyone. So I can wait to remove whatever stabilizer does not um, sort of tear away. I can wait for the remaining um, in the in the first wash of the sweatshirt. Now, I shouldn't really say the first wash because whenever I'm embroidering a garment that I am keeping for myself and not gifting, I pre-wash it because I really want to remove any kind of, you know, if it's going to shrink at all, I want that to happen 
before I add my pretty embroidery to it and not shrink afterwards. Because again, we are going for the least amount of puckers possible with our beautiful embroidered creation. So I just got pretty much all of that topper off. I have maybe a tiny little bit right there. So nothing that I really need to rinse away. Now, if you had a more intricate design, you might have a lot more areas where that water soluble stabilizer is a little bit more difficult to just tear away. And in those instances, you can use a cotton swab or a Q-tip and really moisten it up quite a bit and run it along those stitches and then it will release for you. So you don't have to submerge or um, you know, run a whole bunch of water over your garment if you don't you know, wanna wait for it to dry and all of those good things, but still wait for it to dry if you do that. All right, so topper is removed and now we get to take it off of the uh, stiffy stabilizer. So I am simply going to loosen up my hoop Take the inner hoop out and remove the stabilizer. So now I have my big sheet of stabilizer attached to my sweatshirt and I'm just going to carefully tear it away just like I did with that topper, but now I'm working on the wrong side. And you can see that kind of fleecy texture that I have going on. This stiffy works really great when you are working with, like I said earlier, that high density design. Really gives a lot of stability to your design over time. So I'm just running my fingernail under there so I can get the middle section of stabilizer removed. You can also use those curved tip squeezers and just hold them closed so they don't accidentally, you know, slice into something and kind of run your stabilizer along that thread edge and just peel it away. So I have a couple of places where it is not removed all the way and that's because I didn't trim all those jump threads like I thought that I did. So that's why it's helpful to remove those jump threads even on the wrong side of your garment so that you can uh, tear away that stabilizer really cleanly and nicely. So I can get really in there with my squeezers or even a pair of tweezers and get the rest of that stabilizer removed. And then whatever is remains underneath those stitches is gonna stabilize my design over time. So I really honestly just have a couple more pieces here and it's all gone. Now, if this were a t-shirt weight um, or a you know lighter weight knit type of sweatshirt, I would also apply a layer of sulky tender touch to the wrong side of my embroidery so that any kind of stitching that might be scratchy against the skin when worn would be covered up by that tender touch stabilizer. That's a fusible stabilizer that has a really nice silky feel to it. But for this, honestly, this feels so nice anyways. This thread is, you know, really smooth. <laughs> and my design um, has such heavy thread weight um, plus the fact that this is just a more stable knit um, and I just simply don't need that tender touch behind it. So here is my finished sweatshirt. Shall we go ahead? I mean, I would put it on, but then I have to turn around so you all can see it. This is the, our big reveal here. So, okay, ready? Maybe we can do this. Maybe we can't. Did it work? I can't tell if you could see it or not, but I'll take some nice photos for it and uh, post it on the blog at sulky.com a little bit later in the month here, but you saw it here first, the lucky sweatshirt embroidered almost in real time. 
This is quite a large design with a lot of stitches, but I just love the colors. And another thing to note, when you are looking for, you know, sweatshirts and t-shirts and things like that to embroider, um, you don't have to go for the most basic thing that you can find. You know, you can look for these style lines and a little bit more, um, you know, stylized type of sweatshirt. Um, you don't have to always go for, let's say, you know, like a blank sweatshirt, those kinds of things. Also, think about, you know, your color scheme. I really wanted a green sweatshirt because it's for St. Patrick's Day, right? Well, if I had gone with a real, you know, like Kelly green or shamrock green, then my design would have kind of disappeared into the sweatshirt. So instead, I chose kind of a teal uh, sweatshirt. Again, happy accident happened to be what was at the store. But these green colors in that thread palette really pop off of that now. And, you know, it's still in the same color family. We're still wearing our green on St. Patrick's Day. So I really, really love how it turned out. And I hope that you do too. So I want to see everybody's lucky sweatshirts. If you decide to make this project, make sure to post your pictures to social media. And guess what? We have a brand new sulky Facebook group that you all can join and post your pictures. It's called the Sulky Stitch and Post. And I've linked to it in the description of today's post so you can head on over and join the Facebook group. And I hope that we all get to see everybody's pictures of all your creations and we can bounce ideas off of each other there. And I hope that you will join us on our uh, Facebook group. So we're gonna have lots of special things coming up for members of that group. So be sure to become a member and um, I think you will enjoy. All right, what else? Be sure that you are registering for that Casey Duffel video cast because in a couple weeks we will be going live with this project. And I mean, I can't decide which bag I love more, the burgundy or the gray. And honestly, last week when I told you all about this and I unveiled the bags, um, it was kind of a tie. So they're telling me now that the burgundy bag kits are going fast. So apparently burgundy is um, coming out on top so far, um, but you all tell me. All right, so again, join me in a couple weeks for the Casey Duffel. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you're getting in the St. Patrick's Day spirit. My kids call it Leprechaun Day, and I hope that's not offensive to anyone, but I think it's so cute that I don't even want to correct them. But anyways, um, I hope that this helps get you in the spirit. And again, be sure to use that stabilizer selection tool. It's a really, really great resource. And hats off to Sulky for making that happen because, I'm, you know, they've had it for a long, long time. And I'm sure it was a really big project before my time. Um, and it's just a great, great resource. So I hope you will all head on over there and check it out. Um, especially if you're ever in a bind and not sure where to go, you can head on over to the selector tool and give that a go. You can also always email us at info at sulky.com. We are happy to help you with your product and project questions and concerns. We are always there for you. You can also send us a message here on Facebook or YouTube um, in the comments and we will get back to you as soon as we possibly can. So have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. Enjoy your lucky sweatshirts, and I'll see you next week on another So What.